Hey everybody, it's Chris with ChrisBello.com and today I just want to talk about the topic of perfectionism. My buddy and I were actually talking a week ago. We have an accountability phone call. Once a week we just check in, see how each other did. We talk about struggles, things that we succeeded with in the week and things that we're planning on doing going forward. So one of the challenges that my friend was having was dealing with perfectionism and wanting everything to be perfect, every little detail before releasing it out into the wild. And he asked me how I felt about it, how I address it. And this is the advice that I gave him. I tried to think of a lot of suggestions and examples and things like that, but ultimately the title of this video and the advice that I gave him is that done is better than perfect. The perfect book that was never released, nobody knows about it. It's got zero stars, right? It's made zero dollars. But there are books out there that are released all the time that do well, they become bestsellers because the author took action, the author wrote it down, got a publisher, an editor to help out with the process and released it out there for the world to see and to access. Same thing goes for blog content, for podcasts, for videos. It's better to release something that's imperfect. Like for example, I've been doing a podcast for over a year now and I have not missed a single Monday. I've been releasing an episode weekly, no matter what, when I'm sick, when it's cold outside, when I'm out of town, I release a new podcast episode and that consistency is key. That is more important, I think, to get it out there and to stay with what I said I was going to do instead of trying to make the perfect episode and eliminate all the background noise and make sure the audio is always perfect. If there's a little issue and I'm on a time crunch, it's better to just release it and hit that timeline that you said. I know that there are a lot of people out there that struggle with perfectionism. You may not be happy with doing anything that's not the best you can possibly do. But think of it this way. Imagine if you gave yourself all day long to write the perfect blog post, find the perfect pictures, have the perfect headline, and make sure that the SEO words are all optimized for the perfect search engine optimization. That's a pretty overwhelming task, right? To get that perfect thing in all areas, it's gonna take a long time and you're probably gonna take all day to do it. If you're able to time block, give yourself one or two hours to write that blog post, you'll be surprised that the work that you're able to do when you're focused and when you have that deadline, that looming deadline in the distance, you're gonna get almost the same quality of work because you're working to make sure that you fit into that schedule and you're giving your best effort instead of getting distracted or pulling up Wikipedia or trying to research one more article to, to reference in your blog post. A few uh, tips that I recommend that I actually found when doing some research is just make sure to embrace imperfection because nobody's perfect. At the end of the day, we all do the best that we can. Some of us can put out better things than others in less time, but you're gonna get better as you go. My first podcast episode, if you go back and listen to that, I'm very monotone. I'm just like, hi, this is Chris. I'm with the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. And it was very boring even for me to listen to now. And now I'm all like, this is Chris with the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. Welcome to a new episode. I get better every single time because now I'm more comfortable in front of the mic. I've got the lighting a little bit better. I still can work on the background. I mean, it's not the perfect background. I'm using an overhead desk lamp instead of like professional studio lighting but done is better than perfect. A few other tips that I found when doing some research on overcoming imperfection is to work with a deadline. Like I mentioned, it's better to set a deadline and know when the hard stop is and honor it. And then don't compare yourself against others, always compare yourself against yourself. An example, I listened to uh, Thomas Frank, he has over 1.3 million subscribers on YouTube and he had a video on this, so I'll link that up in the description if you wanna go see it. But he gave an example that it's not fair if you're creating videos for YouTube to compare your first video to someone else's 500th video. That is not apples to apples comparison. And of course your first video is probably not gonna be as good as someone else's 500th because they've gone through the motions, they've done all the legwork to get better and better each time. And now they're at a level that you can get to, but you just have to start putting in the work now. My friend, actually thanked me for the advice and for sending over that video, which I just talked about from Thomas Frank. And a few days later, he actually attended a training where he learned an idea to treat your day just like a school schedule. If you think back to high school where you've got class for 45 minutes or an hour and then the bell rings and then literally close the textbooks and move on to the next thing. So treat your day like that. This is what he told me on his first day of trying this. He said, 
I feel like I've been super productive and my mind has been fresh all day. So when you're able to switch it up like that, you're able to turn one subject off and switch gears to another, it keeps the day entertaining and it keeps you engaged and you keep on moving on. Because at times you might get stuck doing something for like three hours because you're just, you think that you need to get it to a certain level and you're just having a hard time thinking like writer's block if you're trying to write that school paper and you got two days to turn it in. This is why they always say you should start in advance. Maybe try to finish most of it a week in advance, give yourself a few days of clear mind, and then like two days before it's due, review everything, make those final tweaks, maybe move a couple paragraphs around. I don't know, it's been a long time since I've written a paper for school, but you get the idea. I'm a huge fan of time blocking, but I never thought of taking it from this class perspective, so I really do love that idea. The beauty of setting deadlines is that you have to stay focused and concise. So if you give yourself two hours to write that perfect blog post instead of a full day, you're going to find that you get quite a bit done in that two hours and that it's pretty good. It may not be perfect, there may be a couple things you can tweak, but at least release it and hit that deadline that you set for yourself. You can always make changes later, a week later. Or even a year later, you can go and optimize content to be more uh, search engine optimized friendly for searching on Google and whatnot. And so just take that school approach and see how much more you're able to accomplish in a day. Some of the key takeaways I'd like to point out is that we're all imperfect. Failure is part of the recipe to success. Failure enables us to learn from mistakes and to continue going forward. And just fail forward, continue to stack those small wins. Every single day, you're gonna be surprised to see how success just builds over time, just being consistent, making a few changes here and there, tweaking, testing, uh, learning, improving. But most importantly, no matter what else I say, I can't quite sum it up better than to say that done is better than perfect. Here's a really great relevant motivational quote from Zig Ziglar. You don't have to be great to start, but you do have to start to be great. Some of the actionable steps that you can take are Practice time blocking if you're not already or try to take it from the school class approach. You may be getting geared up and ready to do two hours of an activity that kind of is a waste of time and isn't gonna move the needle in your business or in your next steps on whatever you're trying to accomplish. I see this all the time with people that are new starting up businesses or following ideas. They're spending so much time on irrelevant things like creating the perfect website name or business name or creating business cards before they even have an idea or a business or any leads. If you're in real estate, for example, I'm working in real estate now. I see people coming up with the perfect name, the perfect logo, working on business cards when they should be going out there and finding motivated sellers or finding you know properties that need work to send out marketing to direct mail and things like that too. Practice time blocking. For example, time block your YouTube video watching. Set a 30 minutes or an hour for yourself. When the timer goes off, switch to the next task so that way you don't get stuck watching three or four hours of YouTube videos when really you should be learning for 30 minutes, maybe watching 20 minutes for entertainment, and then getting to your next task to move the needle and whatever it is. That's all I have for you today. Questions, comments, concerns, post them below. You can check out the podcast or my blog post. Just go to my website, chrisbello.com. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah.